When you sign up for a website, have you ever noticed that you receive an email right afterwards? So how do you send an email after you sign up to someplace? So we're gonna take a look at how we can do this using Vue.js and Amplify. We're gonna use the Cognito backend service and it's gonna be connected to a post confirmation Lambda that will execute and it will send an email via the SES AWS service. That's a lot of acronyms, but I'm gonna show you how you can get started with this in less than 10 minutes. So let's jump on in. Open up VS Code and then we'll type in npm init view at latest to install the latest version of Vue. And we're gonna ask, be asked a few questions here. First is our project name. We'll just call it Amplify Welcome Email. And it's gonna ask us where I want TypeScript. We're gonna type yes there. And for the rest, we can just use the defaults and then there we go. So next thing we need to do is to change directories into it and we'll need to install a few libraries. So first we'll install our at AWS Amplify UI view. If it was React, it would be UI React and the AWS Amplify library. Now this will install all the dependencies we need. Let's install the AWS Amplify CLI and this will just take a moment that installed. If you've never run Amplify before, you might have to run Amplify configure. Otherwise run Amplify init. It's gonna ask us some configuration options. We can just choose all the defaults. That should be fine. This will then provision the backend, create all the buckets and IAM roles that we need. One of the most important things we need to do is add authentication to our app. So we're going to choose manual configuration and we'll just walk this step by step. So first we're gonna choose is user sign up, sign in connected with AWS IAM controls. It's the default. Then we're gonna choose a friendly name. We'll just go ahead and hit enter here. And then we're gonna do the same thing for identity pool. Now it's gonna ask you if we want unauthenticated logins. We can choose no. We don't want any third party authentication providers either. So we can choose no here again. We're gonna be asked here if we want to add in any third party identity providers like Facebook, Google, Amazon. We're just gonna hit enter through here and not select any of them. And now we're gonna ask for a default user pool name. We'll just hit enter here and then how do we want to sign in? We're going to choose email. I feel like this is the best way to sign in. And then we're going to ask if we do want any user pool groups. We're going to choose no. We're going to be asked if we want any admin queries. We're going to put no. We're not going to have any multi-factor authentication. So we can turn this off here. We want to keep on email-based user registration and forgot passwords. So we'll choose the default here. I'll choose the default here for all these verification messages and subject messages. We're gonna choose the default for overriding the default password policy. We're gonna say no here. We're not gonna add any more attributes. So we're gonna choose email here, it's defaulted. Let's choose the default for the app refresh token for 30 days. We won't change the user attributes read or write either and we'll choose the default by hitting enter. Let's not add any special capabilities. We'll hit enter here for the defaults. We're not gonna add any special auth flows. We'll choose no here. This is the option we've been waiting for. We need to choose yes here to do you want to configure a Lambda trigger for Cognito. Then we want to choose post confirmation. What this will do is it'll create a Lambda that will only be triggered after a customer runs through a confirm process, like when they sign up. Then we'll choose create your own module, which will allow us to update the Lambda inside VS Code. Let's edit that Lambda. So in VS Code, we're gonna go into our Amplify folder that was created, then backend, then function, then into the source, and then into custom.js. And in here, we'll see just an empty file, but we're gonna go ahead and add everything in that we need. Let's go ahead and add in SES. So we're gonna go import in SES from the AWS SDK. And then we're gonna go and add in the region. And now we're gonna add an if statement to check to see if the event.trigger source equals the post confirmation confirm signup. This will make sure that this only is sent out when a user signs up and they confirm their signup. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new send email function that accepts in an email address and a body. So inside the send email function, it's going to follow the same parameters that we use with SES. So we have to create this destination which where we add in this, this big object that has this two address. We're gonna add this source in, which we'll talk about in a moment. And then we're gonna have, we're gonna pass this body in, which we'll add in some text inside here, which will have the data for it. And then of course we'll need the subject and we'll just hard code the subject in, but we can change this if we need to and later in the future. One important area that we need to make sure is that the Lambda can access SES. So within Amazon, we always have to add actions and resources. So we're gonna set in the action for SES send mail and the SES send raw email. 
and then we're going to have that access to all resources. So in other words, the Lambda function should be able to access any sort of SES services and be able to send emails out. Now that we have the correct permissions, we need to make sure that our Lambda actually can send emails. So we're gonna change this source email to our email address. I just put a temporary one in here. So you'll need to put this as an email address that you have access to. We need to send our new Lambda to Amplify into our AWS backend services so we can run Amplify push dash Y, which we'll go ahead and do this. While this is deploying, let's jump into the AWS console and do a quick setup of SES. By default, SES actually can only send emails to verified identities. In production mode, you can send it to all email addresses, but for the sake of this demo, we'll just add in some verified identities so we can test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and open up SES. I'm gonna search for SES. It's gonna show up our Amazon simple email service for highly scalable inbound and outbound email service. I'm gonna choose verified identities, and then I'm gonna click create identity. And this is the window that I'm gonna to use to enter our email address in, so that way we can send emails to it. So I'm gonna use an old email address here, and I'm gonna click Create Identity. You can see here it's gonna take a few moments. It's gonna go ahead and create it. In another window, I should have received an email. I'll open up my email client. I'll click on that email and it will verify. And then if I go back to the console, it'll show verified there. We are ready to go back into VS Code and set it up for our app. So for AWS Amplify, we'll need to add in this script tag here. It's just a part of it working with V. And then inside our V config, we'll add in this runtime config. And this is another configuration that we need to use since we're using Vue and V together. Inside the main file, we'll set up Amplify by importing in our AWS exports file. I noticed while importing this in that I actually didn't have the right configurations to import in a JS file. So I had to go back into the TS config and allow JS to true. So that way it was able to be imported in. And then I was able to import it in correctly. By the way, this AWS export file is created whenever you create a new Amplify app with using Amplify CLI. And then for the rest of the configuration, we'll have to import Amplify in and then run amplify.configure. So inside the app.view file, I went ahead and deleted everything inside here. And we're gonna go and add in the authenticator, which is a connected component that adds in sign up, sign in. And basically it's gonna surround our whole application. So only authenticated users can use it. We'll import the authenticator in and in the styles. Make sure you import the styles in, they're really important. Otherwise the authenticator will not be styled at all. We'll add in the authenticator component to the template. And then we have slots available for the authenticator. So it has some useful ones like user and sign out. We have it all in our documentation, which I'll leave a link for inside the description below. But essentially we can create this click out button with an at click handler uh, just for sign out. So that way when users sign in, they'll have a button to sign out as well. Let's go and fire this thing up. We'll run npm run dev, which will start our development server. Now we can see here in Chrome that we have it all working and we can click the create account tab and start creating a new account. Just remember to use the same email address that you did before that you put that you verified your identity in SES or this won't work. We'll have to verify our email. So we'll check our email. We should have gotten a code in it and then we'll paste it in the screen here and then we will be signed in. You can see this hello and the sign up button that we created earlier, so that's a good sign. So if we did everything correctly at this point, we should have received an email. And if we look, there it is. So congratulations, you have been confirmed.